Mrs. Gerling, um, is it possible to sue the government over extension of uh, the deadline for Brexit? Because that's the word here in corridors of power that forces who would like to leave, absolutely leave, on 29th of March, they're going to undertake a legal action in European court in Luxembourg uh, to stop uh, the, the possibility of uh, remain. No, I, I don't think that is possible because the treaty foresees the possibility of an extension if the 27 member states agree. What I've heard is that um, Mr. Farage, on behalf of, if you like, the leavers of the UK, is doing a deal with Mr. Salvini from the Labour North, who in effect controls uh, the Italian position in council, um, that they will veto the 27. So 27 might not be able to agree that there will be an extension because Salvini will veto it. Now I don't know how true that is, that's a rumour that's circulating, I think that's far more likely than a court appearance because as far as I'm concerned it's not possible for them to say that there should not be an extension to the court. It's, it's perfectly allowed under the treaty so long as there's a unanimous acceptance by all 27. Well, as our um, UK citizen, um, are you prepared to pack your uh, luggage and leave on 29th? What is your sentiment? How you feel the situation? Well, of course, I personally feel very sad about it. As a member of this parliament, if my country leaves on the 29th, I have to leave, and it's as simple as that. Um, so I would be extremely unhappy about that. I believe that the membership, the UK's membership of the European Union is a precious thing. Uh, I never wanted to lose it. And as we've gone through the last almost three years now, it's become increasingly obvious what we are losing and what we're giving up. And I think more and more people are seeing that, you know, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And it's definitely worth having. So I think uh, my sentiment is now being echoed by the majority in the UK. Do you think the second referendum is possible and um, is it a little bit like French leaving NATO and then coming back? The difficulty with just leaving and then thinking, oh well, in a year or two years we can come back, is that we have a very sweet deal with the EU. So contrary to what the leaders say, we have a lot of opt-outs, we don't have to join the EU, we're not in the we have a lot of... Uh, home affairs and justice opt-outs, which would not be available to us as an accession state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we would become like Turkey, Montenegro, or wherever. We, we would be a state that would have to satisfy the terms of the European Union to join. And that would not be the deal that we currently have as a member. Uh, but do you take uh, the um, Brexit as fait accompli, as the fact uh, that you leave and that's all because you leave without a deal or you st still think that it's reversible and your government can uh, cancel it and have a second referendum for example? Well I've been working on a second referendum for over a year now. I mean I'm strongly part of that campaign. That, to me that's the only hope that we have of staying in the EU and I don't think you can really reverse it just by government revoking. I think we have to have a referendum so people can have their say. I think we've reached the end of the road now on what the UK Parliament and government between them can come up with for the terms on which we leave. And now we should take it back to the people to decide. So no, I don't just accept that we're leaving in two weeks. Uh, I think, that I'm pretty sure we won't be actually, but I don't wish to have a hostage to fortune. I think it's always possible that we will be, because it's, as it stands, the legislation says we leave. So Parliament have to apply that, they have to revoke that legislation. And that's a big ask. Um, what about your Prime Minister? Because there are a lot of voices who are blaming her. Is it fair to blame her uh, for the current situation, for the current uncertainty? Absolutely. She took this on board. She decided way back when she made the Lancaster House speech that we're all Brexiters now and the way in which you leave is set out by her red lines. No ECJ, no single market, no customs union, no free movement. That was an absolute tactical error, in my view. That was the point at which I turned away and thought, I can't support that, because to me, the referendum result, which was very close, was a siren call for saying, we need a softer Brexit, we need something that satisfies both sides, and that was never going to satisfy both sides.
side because that was completely hard Brexit. And then, of course, she completely failed to deal with the issue of the Irish border, which everyone recognised long before was going to be a problem, and it's just been, the can has just been kicked down the road. So, I, do I blame her? Absolutely, 100%. And the people who advise her.